Good morning and Happy New Year. Go ahead and take a seat. Uh, we thought we would do something just a little different this morning with it being uh, New Year's weekend um, and look at what has taken place in 2016 uh, and kind of look forward to what's going to take place in 2017. So before I go any further, let me introduce our esteemed panel to you this morning. Um, uh, over here we have Pastor Chet. He is our executive pastor here at Calvary. Uh, this is Amber Smith. She is our serve coordinator uh, here at Calvary. And this is Robert Smith. He is our student pastor here at Calvary. And I'm Pastor O.C. I'm the family pastor here at Calvary. And uh, we thought that we would spend a little time talking about 2016 and 2017. And uh, before we get into talking about our own personal lives, let's uh, highlight a little bit of what took place here at Calvary in 2016. Now, uh, probably the most memorable moment of 2016 uh, for Calvary was moving into this building. Uh, it was May of this past year we moved in. Uh, I know many of you spent years looking forward to this moment, um, and uh, <laughs> we uh, we did it with a lot of celebration and a lot of excitement, and we have been truly blessed uh, getting to move into this building and being able to minister through it. But let me be really honest with you here at this point. Uh, this church, this, or this building, is not the church, is it? The, the church is us. If this building, God forbid, burned to the ground this afternoon... This church would continue to exist, wouldn't it? Because it's the people of Christ that is the church. And God has done some amazing things through us as a church in 2016. So let me highlight a few things that has happened in 2016 with us as a church. The first one is, is we've done some great mission trips this year. Uh, somewhere just under a dozen trips. Uh, everything from local trips where we went to schools or, or we served in different ministries here in Lake Havasu to going to the Native American reservation uh, up at Peach Springs to down to San Luis, Mexico or Idaho or Albania or Thailand. We had a great time doing mission work uh, in our community and all over the world in 2016. Another thing to highlight is that you as Calvary gave almost $80,000 just to work that's here in Havasu. That's $80,000, absolutely, that's $80,000 that went into the hands of needy people here in this community. That does not even include what you gave that went outside of Lake Havasu to mission work that happens all over the planet. $80,000. Can you imagine the number of lives that have been touched because of your generosity? It's just amazing. Uh, another thing, you may remember if you were here with us in September, that Pastor Chad took a trip to Mozambique. Uh, and before he left, he raised money to uh, dig wells at different villages throughout Mozambique. Uh, and I want you to know that through that campaign, you as Calvary donated $32,000 to dig wells in Mozambique. Now, yeah. Now, if you do the math, every, each of those wells cost $3,000. So that's almost 11 wells that were dug because of your generosity. And the missionary from Mozambique uh, that came and spoke here uh, said that each well touches the lives of somewhere around 1,200 people. So if you do the math, somewhere around 13,000 people got to hear about Jesus and had their lives changed both physically and spiritually because of your generosity. 13,000 people are getting fresh water because of you. So thank you very much for your generosity in many, many ways uh, that we've seen this season. Uh, the next thing that I want to highlight is actually one that I think is probably one of the coolest, and we saw it earlier in the service, is baptisms. Calvary baptized 107 people in 2016. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. 
those are lives, 107 people who said, Christ has changed my life and I want to make a public statement to the world about my relationship with Jesus. And that one's a, one that is personally close because one of those 107 was my six-year-old son, Knox. So for me, it's such a huge thing to see the life change that has taken place uh, when we see baptisms take place here at Calvary. So a lot has happened here at Calvary, but the four of us are up here because we're going to talk a little bit about what has happened with us personally. And so we've given two questions in your uh, sermon notes this morning. And the first question is this. What has God, or what God, sorry, what has God taught you in 2016? What has God taught you in 2016? And for me, uh, it's pretty simple. My, the past year has been pretty much defined by foster care ministry. My wife and I, uh, even before we got married, decided that we thought it'd be a good idea to become foster parents at some point in our life. Um, and we had our son, Knox, six years ago, and we've been unable to have children since then. And, and so about two and a half years ago, we went to God and said, God, is, is this you telling us that we need to step into foster care ministry now rather than later on down the road? And about two years ago, we got a very clear answer from God saying, yes, I want you to step into this ministry. This is what I'm calling you into. And so we began the process of becoming a foster family in 2016. You know, uh, in 2016 was probably one of the first years that I was really intentional to set some goals and have some, some very clear and defined priorities for the year. And I had done the whole New Year's resolution thing before and said, oh, I'm going to just kind of generally work on these areas and things. But this last year was the first year that I said, okay, here's five or six things that I really want to accomplish, I really want to grow in, really want to do better in this coming 12 months. And uh, and looking back on it in the last couple months of the year, kind of seeing, okay, where have I made progress? Where did I end up with those goals? God really showed me some things uh, about life. He showed me much more than just uh, about making goals and planning a year and New Year's resolutions and things. Because as I looked at that, there were some goals that I met, and obviously there were some that I didn't, as, as all of us have experienced. But as I looked at that, the goals that I did meet in the, these last 12 months were things that from the very start of the year, I said, this is something that's important to me. And so I'm going to set aside time every day, every week, every month, whatever it might be in that area, to work on that, to do that, to get better in that area. And the goals that I didn't meet were the things I said, ah, you know, I can work on those later in the month or I'll just fit those in when I have time. And then you, g you get to the end of the year and you say, okay, well now I have to do 11 months of workouts in these next four weeks. <laughs> and it just doesn't work like that. And so God really showed me that, that if I want to grow in an area, if I want to be great in an area, if I want to be a great follower of Christ, if I want to be a great husband, a great father, or any of those things, I have to be intentional to work on them throughout the year. I have to be intentional every day to make those things a priority. And, and he showed me this through Ephesians 5.15, which tells us to be careful how we live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most use of our time. And so through this, I just saw that, that growth and progress in life doesn't happen on its own. It doesn't happen magically or, or in the background. It happens when we place a priority on things and we uh, make things the number one priority in our life and set aside time for that. And that's something I really saw this last year and hope to get better at here in 2017 and in following years as well. So in 2016, I learned that being a parent is really hard. <laughs> um, and there are a lot of expectations placed on parents um, most of which are unrealistic. And I realized that I can't handle any of it on my own. Um, and when I try to, I am impatient and irritable and get stressed out and worry all the time, which is not good for me or my family. And so I learned that I need to be completely dependent on God every single day, um, every single moment. And this is something I've had to learn in many stages of life, whether that was in school and college or in the workplace or getting married and being a wife and now becoming a mother, I realized I need to depend on God and not my own strength and ability. And that starts off with me 
submitting my desires and my plans and my attitude for what Christ has for me. And some of the ways that I've been able to learn this this year is through worshiping God on a daily basis. And that includes worship music like we have here on the weekends and prayer, which has been so huge for me. Um, just praying continually throughout the day. And a lot of times it's just stopping in the midst of my son throwing a tantrum and just asking God to give me peace um, and to give him grace the same way that God gives me grace when I throw a tantrum toward God about something I don't like. And th through learning all of this it and being dependent on God, it, it hasn't changed any of the situations. It doesn't change the fact that my son is in the you know, defiant stage and laughs at me when I tell him not to do something. Um, but it changes my heart and my attitude so that I can respond in a gracious and loving and patient way. And the other thing um, that I've, I've done is to spend time daily in God's word and just knowing God more and more. Um, and something that I have really learned is that none of the other expectations that the world um, places on me matter. What matters are, are God's expectations. And he said he cares about the fact that I raise my son Eli in the discipline and instruction of the Lord and that I teach him to love God and to care about others and serve others and to be kind and caring. And so for for me to do that, I have to depend on God every day so that I can teach him those things. And so in 2016, um, I've learned to depend on God so that I can have joy and I can have peace in the midst of the tantrums. <laughs> you ever have one of those days that nothing went right? I any of you ever have? I had one of those years. 2016 was one of those years for me. And what it taught me was that I needed to stop trying to function in Chet's strength and ability, trust God, focus on God's people for him to help me accomplish his goals, his purpose, his direction for Chet's life. I, I can kind of sum it up in a little story. In June of 2016, myself and 14 other missionaries boarded a plane and headed to Saranda, Albania. And we got to New York City and had plenty of time in New York City. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> it's about time to board the flight and people are wanting to check my documents. Well, that's not generally a good thing when they want to check your documents. But in this case, I knew my documents were good. I handed the lady my documents. My wife's standing there, Miss Claudia. She hands the documents. And then the lady hears a conversation between Claudia and I. It's one of those times that I probably wish I'd have kept my mouth shut, but I'm glad I didn't. And uh, she looked at me. She said, did you tell me or did you say your final destination is Saranda, Albania? I said, yes, but our final flight is going into Corfu, Greece. She goes, well, I, I, I see a problem here. I said, a problem? She said, sure. Your passport expires in 30 days. I said, not a problem. I'll be back in 14 days. Not a problem. To which she began telling me that I was not going to board the flight with the rest of my 14 other missionaries or 13 other missionaries. And I don't normally play the pastor card. <laughs> but I reached deep in that pocket and I pulled that pastor card. I said, ma'am, you don't understand. I, I am the leader of these 14 people going to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. I am responsible for their will. I am responsible for all of this. And she stopped me right in the middle, about four foot eight of this little lady, and looked at me. She said, sir, this is not going to come out the way it sounds, but she said, this is the easiest way I can say it to you. Sir, you are not getting on this flight, period. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you're going, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. She says it's a good thing we caught it here because you could have been stranded overseas. So those of you who have passports, let me recommend that you <laughs> check your passport and make sure that you have at least six months. Because apparently expiration date doesn't mean anything to other governments 
if you're going to travel in foreign lands, make sure you got at least six months expiration before you go. But here's how God redeemed that situation. 24 hours later, exactly 24 hours later, I walked in that same airport. I showed that same little lady a brand new, complete passport, not a temporary. I was able to have tickets exchanged. And those of you who have ever missed a flight and had tickets exchanged, you know that's pretty pricey. Zero cost on exactly the same flight, flying in exactly at the same time to the exact same destination, just simply 24 hours later. That kind of exemplified the fact that Chet was not in charge, God was. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 then became what I, I began to claim the rest of the year. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding in all all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths so trust and faith is what your pastor learned in 2016 so we've looked at 2016 but let's face it today is the first day of 2017 Uh, and so we've got our second question what direction is God moving you in 2017? Uh, Where do you see God taking you? And for me, uh, it's tied intimately to what has happened in 2016 because we're not actually done. My wife and I are not done with the foster care licensing process. Uh, We've gone through the classes. I'm getting my CPR renewed uh, this month, but we still have to go through a pretty rigorous uh, home inspection. The state will send representatives uh, to go through my home and make sure that it meets all the qualifications that I have to meet in order for my home to be safe for foster kids to come into my home. Um, And so we're still in the process of making some home repairs and doing some minor changes here and there so that we can pass that home inspection. But let me be honest with you. It's one thing to take a class and get CPR certified and get your home inspected, it's a whole other thing to get a foster child into your home, to have a child dropped off at your house. And so for us, 2017 is very much that next step of where the rubber meets the road and us having a child brought to us that has been pulled from a family and brought to our house so that we can care for that child, uh, either momentarily, temporarily, or maybe permanently. And so that's kind of where we're at. And I've actually been surprised uh, that there are a lot of naysayers out there about foster care. There are a lot of people uh, out in the world that say, oh, I would never be a foster parent. I would never do this because you just don't know what child is going to come into your house or what issues they're going to have or if they're physically or mentally uh, you know handicapped or have difficulties I, I would never do it because of things like that and so my wife and I had to have some difficult conversations about you know the realities uh, of taking a foster child into our home uh, because there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to bringing a child that we have no uh, connection with into our house um, There may be behavioral issues. There may be physical problems. There may be uh, issues that they bring along, baggage that they bring along into that home. Because let's be real for a moment. If a government agent came into your house and took you from your family and then took you to a complete stranger's house and said, this is where you're going to live and this is going to be your family for a time being, you would act out too, wouldn't you? You would have a hard time. Any of us would have a difficult time in that setting. And we know, my wife and I, Jana and I know, that bringing a foster child into our home is going to be difficult. And let me be very frank here, we don't care. We know the realities, but we don't care if it's going to be hard. Because when Jana and I began discussing being foster parents, it wasn't a discussion that sounded like, oh, this will be so nice and it'll be sweet and it'll be rainbows and unicorns and it's going to be so wonderful. It was a discussion that sounded more like, I think God's calling us 
to take a step and do something that's difficult. Because James chapter 1 verse 27 commands us to care for widows and care for orphans. And we feel called to care for orphans. And guys, let's be honest. Most of the time, following God is not easy, is it? It's not unicorns and rainbows. It's not an easy path. As a matter of fact, Christ promised us that if we're a true follower of Christ, there's going to be persecution in our life, probably. Being a follower of Christ can be difficult. But here's my encouraging word to you today. Don't let fear prevent you from following God's direction in your life. Good point, O.C. You, you know, God's got Chet on a little different direction for 2017, and I want to invite each of you to join um, the vision that, that God has given me. And, and here it is. My focus for 2017, most of the time that you see me, you're going to hear this from me, is that every day matters every single day matters what i eat each day matters to my health how i love everyone that i encounter on a day-to-day -day basis matters um how i choose to spend my time each day leading others to life change including myself matters because as a child of God, God totally has this. My life is in God's hands, not Chet's hands, unless I choose to be rebellious and take it back. And 2016 has kind of taught me that doesn't work real well for Chet. So my life is in God's hands, and he gives me each day to help make a difference for God's kingdom. So every moment of every day, in 2017 matters every moment matters and i'm going to invite each of you in this room to think about people who may not be in this room right now and join me in helping others see how important it is that each day matters and how important they are and that each person you encounter matters for 2017 um, God has shown me um, Ephesians 3 20 and it talks about how God is able to do immensely more than we can ask or ima imagine and I am so thankful to be a part of Calvary and have this um, church family uh, who is just so loving and generous and serves so faithfully and I've just been praying about that verse, and I just believe that God is um, going to do some amazing things in the city of Lake Havasu through the love of the people of Calvary. And um, I'm uh, something that God has placed on my heart directly is to partner with the schools of Lake Havasu and to serve the, the schools, the administrators, the teachers, the students, um, by going out and, and sharing the love of Christ with them by, by serving. And um, so I'm just looking forward to what God is going to do in the life of Calvary in the next year. That's awesome. You know, for our student ministry, we're uh, as well looking at how we can better support our schools. And obviously we want to connect with students there and, and build relationships. But also they're spending so much of their time there that we want to help invest in those places as well with the teachers and administrators. But even more than that, this, this upcoming year, something that's, that's really special to me is finding ways to take uh, and, and impact our culture here in Havasu with some hope and encouragement for the junior high and high school students. Uh, through a couple of situations this last year, I saw just how much these students go through on a daily basis. The amount uh, of negativity and hate and judgment and condemnation and, and stuff that they experience on a daily basis is, is incredible. You know, it's far more than, than I experienced as a teenager, and, and likely that's the case for most of us. But as our culture shifts and as it gets darker, as it gets more difficult to be uh, a Christ follower in these, these times, it makes the message of hope that we have through Jesus that much more important. 
And it makes the message of hope for these teenagers that much more significant because it's so uh, opposite of what they're experiencing on a daily basis. And so we're looking at ways that we can just connect them, especially with adults who, who love Jesus, who care about them, and want to be a part of delivering that, that message of hope and encouragement to them. And, you know, just an encouragement, as, as Chet mentioned as well, you know, every day matters. Every conversation and interaction that we have with other people matter. We can all be that person that brings some hope, some encouragement through Jesus Christ to people's lives. So, so look for ways that we can start impacting this city and the culture of this town uh, with the hope of Jesus Christ this upcoming year. Amen. Well, we've talked about 2016 and what God has taught us. And we've talked about where we think God is leading us in 2017. But my question now is how would you answer that question what has God taught you in 2016 and what do you see God leading you to in 2017 Um, and I know that you look at us here on this stage and you go oh that's easy for you guys to answer because you're pastors you're ministry leaders you work in the church but in reality we struggle with this just as much as anyone else Um, my struggle to figure out foster care was unique to my wife and I. Uh, it would be different for you. It'd be different for any one of us on stage. And so I, I want to give you uh, three things that may help you understand or maybe find what God's direction is for you uh, for 2017. And the first one is this. Uh, you may have heard the four of us talk about um, how our interpersonal lives are connected to our ministry lives. Um, And that's not a coincidence because our ministries are tied to our personal life. And and so I encourage you to maybe look at your life, look at your passions, look at the things uh, or the people that you're interested in and use that, channel that into what God may be leading you toward for 2017. Do you have a passion? Do you enjoy kids? Then maybe you want to volunteer with our children's ministry. Do you enjoy teenagers? Surprisingly, there are people who exist in this room who do like teens. And if you like teenagers, then maybe you want to volunteer with our student ministry. Um, If you don't like students, don't volunteer with our student ministry. You'll hate it. Um, But find what you're interested in. Find what your life is invested in and maybe that's where you do ministry or maybe that's where you get plugged into calvary and do ministry with us the next thing i would encourage you to do and we've mentioned it already is get plugged into a life group Uh, because in a life group imagine for just a moment you're struggling to figure out what direction god has for your life you get plugged into a life group you surround yourself with other believers who are having that same conversation internally, and you meet with them on a regular basis and talk about God and study scripture, do you think God may be a little more, you may be more open to hearing God's voice about direction if you were in that scenario? Of course. And so we encourage you to swing by the tables after the service Ask the questions that you have about our life group ministry. Look at the different life groups. Find one that fits you. And then participate. Get connected uh, so that you can have that open channel, that open discussion with God about the direction he has for you in 2017. And then lastly, um, you may have had a year like Chet had. Uh, Maybe this year was a year of struggle. Maybe this year was a year where it was not exactly the highlight reel, it was closer to the blooper reel uh, for your life. And and so here's my encouragement, if you're struggling this season, uh, if you're struggling overall, seek help, Uh, go talk to someone, and let me give you a couple ways that Calvary may be able to help you here. We have a program on Monday nights, it meets at 6.30 over at our McCulloch campus called Celebrate Recovery. Um, And... We've got a few Celebrate Recovery fans here, obviously. Um, But Celebrate Recovery is a ministry designed to help you with whatever issues you're struggling with. Uh, The the, the catchphrase is habits, hurts, and hang-ups. 
So if you've got a habit, if you've got a hurt that you're struggling with, if you've got a hang-up that is preventing you from moving forward, that's what Celebrate Recovery is for. And they're there to walk with you and help you live life and, and grow closer to God. Uh, another way that Calvary may be able to help is maybe you need to talk with someone one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we have a counseling ministry here. We would love to connect you with a counselor or a, a mentor. Uh, and so contact the church and let us connect you into our counseling ministry here at Calvary. Uh, email us, contact us. Again, don't go through the struggle alone. Uh, even if it's a question of, you know, I feel like God may be leading me into this ministry, contact us. We'd love to sit down with you or take you to lunch and talk about God's calling, God's direction in your life. So like Robert mentioned, make 2017 that year where you're intentional about seeking God and seeking His direction for your life. Don't just lay back and think it's going to happen naturally. Be proactive with your relationship with Christ in 2017. Join me in prayer.